Okay, our next vendor is Ubico. Ubico, spelled Y-U-B-I-C-O, makes the YubiKey, a second factor authentication device. Basically, it's a little computer on a USB stick that works more or less like a smart card, so they can't be cloned, and they're based on the U2F standard. A lot of people in InfoSec use YubiKeys already, uh, even for their personal accounts. Both Facebook and Google let users lock down their accounts with YubiKeys. Uh, I have one on my desk in front of me. I think I mentioned that at the uh, at the top of the show. YubiKeys are great. But what I didn't know is that they're natively supported in Windows since Windows 7. Uh, so instead of having to roll out some awful third-party software stack, you can buy yourself a bunch of YubiKeys for like, I think they're like 40 or 50 bucks a pop. But I mean, obviously, that's going to depend on the volume that you're buying them in. Uh, but yeah, you just buy them and you start using them. For a lot of enterprises, for a lot of enterprises, that's going to solve some of their problems right away. Ubico's VP of Solutions, Jared Chong, joined me to talk about what enterprise users are actually doing with YubiKeys. Here's what he had to say. So there are four major areas that enterprise customers use a YubiKey for. First, computer logon. Second, web applications, which is, you know, you would do that as well as a consumer, which is getting to Facebook. But in an enterprise setting, you would also get to web applications. Then it's also very common to add on to be remote access, which is VPN, RDP, and all these VDI uh, systems that you want to get to. And then the fourth sort of use case that we've really seen a huge uptick is privileged access as well. So a typical enterprise deployment would involve usually one or more of these use cases that the customers would want to solve. And it would also involve one or more protocols that Ubiqui can perform. So it can definitely do the OTP as that's been our bread and butter for a, long, a while. But it also can do smart cards. So today, the, the latest generation is a smart card as well. So it is both the reader as well as a card. And I think the industry has heard the term security key. I know I've heard it on your show many times, or recently quite a number of times. And it's also a security key. So it's a FIDO security key. So because it can work with different authentication protocols, you can actually solve that with different backends of systems to solve the various use cases, which is computer logon, web applications, remote access, or privileged access. So let's talk about how you would go about rolling out YubiKeys to say, you know, every account on a, on a, on a Windows network. I mean, how do you do that? I'd imagine that, okay, sure, you're very well known for making these devices. Most people know the devices from, you know, consumer services. Uh, but if you're an enterprise authentication group, like what's involved in switching over and using uh, something like YubiKey for, for authentication? One of the nice things about what we try to do is we, obviously we are, we are a hardware device where we, we sell a YubiKey to the customers and the customers would distribute these to the employees and they will use this physically with the device that they want to log into, say for a computer. One of the key areas that we try to really work on is to work with existing systems that customers already own. So what do we mean by that is that we, we work really hard to support these multiple various protocols that we have on the YubiKey they all work out of standard space authentication protocol. So for example, in the smart card world, we work with the PIF standard, which is a very common smart card standard in the US. And interestingly enough, it ships with every single Windows 7 box and above. And we plug right straight into the Microsoft ecosystem if you're going to deploy smart cards with Microsoft, which means that if you had a Microsoft AD, which I would say, 99% of enterprise customers have some type of Microsoft environment, then it would be more of a configuration effort to get the YubiKeys to work with something that the customers have already bought. So a very typical deployment of YubiKeys as a smart card is to configure your Microsoft ADCS, your certificate services, to enable provisioning of user certs onto the YubiKey. And once you do that, the next time you log into the computer, if you're the user, you plug it in, instead of putting your username and password, you would actually put in a pin. And once you put in the pin, it uses the user cert that has been provisioned by the Microsoft ADCS. You would just log into your computer straight into the domain. So this is interesting, right? Because, uh, you know, I didn't actually know, and it makes total sense, by the way, this is just me derping out, but I had no idea that you, you actually had native support for your devices. So this isn't some sort of you know, horrible enterprise software stack that you have to install on, you know, your, your auth servers. It's just, you know, you just have to configure them using existing functionality to accept authentication from your devices. Is that right? 
Absolutely. And I think that's what really comes to the core of what we try to do. We try to make it as simple as it is for the users, but also when we say simplicity, we talk about scale. And the only way you get scale is when you work with an open ecosystem that is based on industry standards, right? It's easy to use a YubiKey. We don't just mean use it as in users. Of course, that's that's what people know us from a consumer side. But easy means also easy for enterprise to deploy them. And the reason we do that is we work really hard with the OS and platform vendors and to make sure that they support some open standard that is an authentication open standard or identity open standard so that devices can just work out of the box. What people really are, I would say, tired of in the industry, as you know, I'm sure you talk to many of your customers and audience, is they're tired of this vendor lock-in situation. Now, now, well, we say, okay, well, we could use YubiKey and you lock into using YubiKey. But if we, op- we follow an open standard, or we follow something that's kind of built into the OS or the, or the platform, then if we're not doing our job building the right YubiKeys, people could switch. And so I, that's really what I believe the industry needs, which is more open collaboration and interoperability and less of this proprietary type of like black box magic voodoo. So the, the more that industry can work together, we believe that that's the right strategy to actually up the game for security everywhere. How many YubiKeys are actually out there in the wild right now? Because I'm guessing it's quite a few. It's quite a few. I think we've been, this is coming to our 10th year as a company. So we've hit our 10th year mark. The founders moved here uh, to the Silicon Valley 2012 around there. So I would say that's when this, the uptake of YubiKeys really, really picked up. So I would say in, in the millions, um, several millions so do you have many organizations like uh, banks rolling out YubiKeys to their customers to actually, you know, pr- protect those customers and in, in turn by protecting their customers, protect themselves? Is that, is that a use case that's common? It is a growing use case. I would say the banks are generally cautious of newer type now technology. Interestingly, we've been in business for 10 years to actually consider the technology fairly new. I can look at it from a different angle. So we, if you look at what we've done, we've said, okay, it's it's important to sell to the enterprises, which is part of our business. But it's also important that once we sell to the enterprise, if they believe that what they're providing for individual employees is important, then they should offer this to not just, say, their suppliers or the vendors that they work with, but it's, a, it's important that they offer this type of authentication to their customers as well. So this natural type of evolution, working with their internal employees and then maybe their suppliers and then to the customers is what we've seen really happen. Uh, and we've done this work with the Google folks where we, we actually work with Google to sell to to Google to for their interior use. And then it grew all the way outside, which is now everybody who has a Gmail account can actually use a YubiKey to get into Gmail. And this is the same technology that we'd use inside the enterprise. Uh, banks, I would say, is there are several banks. I can't I can't talk about them um, because of various NDAs. But there are banks that um, that have offered these to their customers in what we call close and distribution um, because of the way they've had policies around this thing. But with Jenny as an uptake, a uh, lot of services now are planning to support uh, the FIDO U two F standard, which is the security keys in their services because it's just deemed to be a much stronger, more efficient, privacy-preserving, privacy modern authentication protocol for the web. So the movement to move uh, from enterprise to consumers and consumers back to enterprise is really what has created the whole buzz with the YubiKeys. Now, if my employer gives me a YubiKey, uh, you know, for use internally on their network. Can I then use that YubiKey to uh, a- a- and set that up with my personal Gmail and Facebook account? I mean, do you require one key per service or I'm guessing you can use uh, the one key for multiple services? The multiple authentication protocols on the YubiKey has different sets of capabilities for how it works with different services. So if your employer decides to issue a YubiKey and does not lock things down, which some of them do, then you could. And we believe that that should be the right model. And the reason is very simple. There is several protocols, particularly the FIDO U2F protocol, which is a privacy preserving protocol, which means that if you provision a credential with one service and you provision another credential for a different service on the, with the same YubiKey, 
the two services don't know is from the same YubiKey. Because of that type of modern approach to authentication, it shouldn't stop any companies from allowing their users to use it with, I would say, consumer services. And, and the way we look at it is very simple. Good security hygiene start at home. Now, if, the, if your employers give the opportunity for the employees to use it at home and they are just doing it every day, then they would be just much more aware of just how to use security products when they get into the organization. So good hygiene at home really continues to translate to good hygiene within the enterprise environment. That makes absolute 100% uh, sense, but it is up to the organizations, is it, whether or not they lock the YubiKeys to certain internal services and they say, no, this is your work YubiKey, you can't use it for anything else. That is true. Uh, so ultimately, it falls on the policy of the of the customers. We do advocate for having a more open policy, but yes, ultimately, it's up to the customers. So sometimes you do, we do have um, users saying, here, here's my personal YubiKey and then here's my my corporate YubiKey, they look the same, so I make a, I differentiated them with some nail polish. One thing we didn't cover, uh, Jared, is actually how you would go about using one of these uh, in, a, in a web application uh, that, you, that you might design, right? So, you know, we mentioned, oh, our banks using them and things like that. Say I'm design, uh, designing a, a web application for my enterprise. I've got a lot of high-value users. Uh, I want to make sure that, uh, that uh, those accounts are very, very secure uh, and it's well within my, my budget to provision a hardware token to those, um, to those users. How do I then actually integrate something like a U2F, you know, YubiKey, into my web app, uh, uh, is that is that? Do you provide a developer kit, or again, is this all relying on standard libraries and things? So when we when we talk about the FIDO U2F protocol, it's an open standard which we co-created with Google. So we have a lot of libraries on how to create your own servers. There are obviously commercial out the box products, what we call authentic, FIDO authentication servers. But if you're a big bang, you probably want to first investigate the protocol and second of all, investigate uh, the open source tools that we have. We have a lot of open source libraries as well, as well as reference servers. So most most big banks or most mixed services, they would actually review all our code on GitHub and ask us questions like, how does this work? Why does it work this way? And we actually give guidance on that. And we, we do give them keys to test. We also give them help if they run into some challenges and sometimes it's an interesting combination of they've got something unique in the environment that they need to address. For example, one of the interesting discussions about uh, how, how, do, how should they think about recovery in this new model? Uh, or how should they think about what the experience is going from different type of browsers and OSs or devices? And we give them guidance on how we've seen other people do it. You know, obviously, we work with some of the big ones already in in the recent years, like you know Google, Dropbox, Facebook. So we've kind of got a pretty good sense of what it is to implement this service from a scalability perspective. But every business has their own requirements, so we try to work with them using what's existing out there. And and typically, all the software that we give to the customers are more or less open source and free. Jared Chong, thank you very much for joining us here on Risky Business to have a chat about uh, about YubiKey stuff. Uh, I'm a big fan. I've got one sitting on my desk in front of me. So thank you very much. Thank you very much, Patrick. That was Jared Chong of Yubico there. And uh, there you go, an open standards-backed second factor hardware device uh, that fits on your key ring and is natively supported by Windows. And you can use it for your Facebook and your Gmail accounts. So I think I've said enough. You can find them at yubico.com, spelled Y-U-B-I-C-O.com. And that is it for this edition of Snake Oilers. The next round of Snake Oilers interviews will kick off in November. If you are interested in participating, do email sales at risky.biz. I'll be back in the weekly show in a couple of days, but until then, I've been Patrick Gray. Thanks for listening. We'll